Hello learners. Today we are going to discuss about the effects of stress. In last class we had discussed about them stress, its different components, and now we are going to discuss about how stress affect our body. So in this uh, today's class we are going to discuss about the uh, effect of stress on the health. on performance and productivity and on relationship so stress can affect individuals in different ways in some individuals it may affect physical health or psychological well being it has severe impact on health performance productivity and relationship effects of stress are interrelated it means stress can affect almost all parts of our life and one thing is related to another thing for example if our health is not good so it may cause stress if our productivity is not optimal it may cause stress because we may get negative feedback from our bosses if our relationship is not good it may cause stress at the same time if we are under stress we may neglect our relationship our productivity will be affected our performance will be affected and definitely it affects our physical and mental health let us see how it affects so as we have discussed like all these things are interrelated with stress let us see the effect of stress on health we all know that due to high stress our immune system goes down it weakens and due to poor immune system lots of opportunistic infections affect us okay, lots of viral diseases bacterial fungal diseases affect us why because our body is not able to find fight the uh, bacteria or virus because due to poor immune system so once the immune system is strong we can fight because see we know all that we, there are tb bacteria in the air okay but we do not get tb why because our immune system is strong as soon as the bacteria goes inside our immune system kills it so it won't allow them to multiply but when our immune system is weak all bacteria all viruses they may have and if to also due to stress also our uh, we look uh, we look little older it accelerates basically aging so it also affect the lifestyle of the individual including diet and nutrition when we are under stress we ignore our diet we ignore nutritious food we do not feel like eating we escape physical exercises we generally uh, not doing any physical activity lying down most of the time or sitting or not not doing it, not engaged ourselves in any productive activity and due to high stress we start consuming alcohol or other drugs like tobacco cannabis etc why we start consuming drugs because uh, due to stress we get bored we don't have anything so anything to do and alcohol and drugs give some relief it gives some pleasurable effect so due to that also we try to avoid stress using alcohol and drugs and due to lifestyle affected lifestyle the, there is a possibility of developing hypertension because it, it is a sympathetic nervous system gets activated and uh, it it has been also seen that those who are using alcohol or drugs they are, they also develop lots of diseases including hypertension diabetes mellitus obesity or under so uh, due to this the blood pressure increases and they remain increase for longer period of time so it is considered as uh, high blood pressure and the person needs medication the same way due to poor lifestyle sedentary lifestyle when there is less activity the and person is taking high calories diet or not doing any work 
are not doing any physical activity. So there is a high chance of developing diabetes mellitus. That is called sugar in layman terms. And the obesity is also very common. And obesity is also one of the reasons for many types of physical illness, including cancer. High stress and affected lifestyle also affect our digestive system. It may cause ulcers in duodenum and the irritable bowel syndrome and inflammatory bowel disease. So like the person may use to go to different places but earlier, but the patient starts avoiding. Why? Because the person feels bowel sickness. He has to go again and again for uh, emptying his bowel. So these are the, some of the issues related to digestive systems. Stress also affects the respiratory system. It may cause asthma or it may exacerbate asthma. Those who are having some asthmatic problem, stress may worsen. It also affects our nervous system, brain, so it may cause migraine or tension headache. So if the person may require some medication. And we all know that stress may affect almost all systems in our life of our body, including endocrine system. Uh, hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism is very common. So, so it shows that due to stress, our whole body get affected that. And not only physical damage it causes, it causes psychological damage as well. So some of the very common psychological symptoms developed due to stress is anxiety. Anxiety is basically a worry about the future that something may, something bad may happen. But what happened, the person is not very clear. Depression, the person may feel low. The person mood remains low, the person may feel fatigued, the person may not enjoy any activities. Another, another symptom is like somatization. In somatization, the person is complaining of multiple somatic complaints, multiple pain, big pain. It's like, like the pain starts from the uh, shoulders and it goes up to the stomach and legs like that. So this somatization is basically associated with it is seen that if there is a high stress in the family, financial problems are there. So housewives generally they develop somatization disorder. Substance use is also very common as we have discussed. Due to stress, the person wants some relaxation, some rest. So the person start taking substance and after in taking initial few uh, bags of the alcohol or few puffs of the cigarette, the person becomes addicted. Then it's not under his or her control to limit the substance use. Insomnia is also one of the major symptoms associated with the stress. Uh, as we have discussed in our earlier several classes about the insomnia, there are, it is a three types of insomnia. Initial insomnia, intermittent insomnia, and terminal insomnia. Initial insomnia is like getting difficulty in falling asleep. Whereas in intermittent insomnia, the person wakes up during the night but gets again sleep. Whereas in terminal insomnia, the person gets up very, very early in the morning, for example, 2, 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. in the morning. And after that, the person finds it very difficult sleep again. So this basically affects the day-to-day -day activity and it may cause some other symptoms also due to sleep disturbances. Due to stress also decline in cognitive functions are seen. Cognitive functions basically assessed on neuropsychological tests like there are tests for attention and concentration and memory. Uh, there are neuropsychological batteries which can assess all these cognitive functions. Test. Then it it affects the uh, decision making process, problem solving process. So due to stress, 
द पर्सन कॉग्नेटिव फंक्शन मैन नॉट फंक्शन वेल सो so now let us see the effect of performance uh, effect of stress on performance and productivity we all know that the person who is under stress it decreases the productivity of the person the quality of the work gets down or uh, the person who was productive earlier is not productive now his work is speed is slow there will be lots of uh, mistakes in his work suppose the person is doing paper work so lots of mistakes will there the person may forget about doing the job of today so the pending lots of pending work will be there due to this pendency the person may get more stress so there is no doubt whatever type of job the person is you doing if the stress is high it definitely affect the productivity absenteeism is also a, a very common uh, side effect of high stress so if the person is under stress the person may not get well sleep and in the morning the person will not go to job or may be late so either the person is late or the person remains absent from the job due to high stress and due to high stress there is a loss of main days for example if the person was doing uh, his complete job earlier now he is doing 50% of so 50% main days were lost so let us understand the stress and the performance on the basis of this inverted u shaped curve given by kis dotson it basically shows the relationship between stress increase of the stress and then decrease in the performance of the task so when stress is low the performance will also be low because we need some amount of stress which is called u stress like in our last few classes we have discussed about the u stress and d stress u stress is good it basically gives us lots of energy motivation to do the things whereas d stress it basically sucks our energy it's very difficult for us to do some work so when the stress is low performance will also be low but when the stress increases and it reaches up to the optimal level that is called u stress is the peak of the this inverted u so that is the stress is optimal and the performance is also high maximum you can say but if the stress keep on increasing then the performance performance gets down so the performance gets affected it means we need some amount of stress to do our job but if the stress becomes this stress more then it will be difficult to continue the job with the same quality or same quantity so in chronic stress exhaustion decreased organizational commitment and higher turnover amongst the employees say so what happens at workplace <coughs> if stress is more so that all the staffs may feel exhausted or the commitment like when we are working in some organization we are committed to the betterment of the organization so that commitment also decreases when we are under stress and lots of staffs they leave the job then another people join okay. <coughs> that is it. and due to high stress job satisfaction decreases so <clears throat> and individuals may take more time to complete a task and poor time management this will see in our next next few slides so it also stress also affects the team form like if we are working in a team our productivity will be more and the cohesion between the staff will be more so it affects teamwork and it affects our ability to function in a group 
why because due to high stress it, we may get irritated if someone says something we may take it otherwise okay so so it affects our teamwork and group functionally so ultimately it leads to poor productivity then it affects our communication as i told you like when someone says something or when who say something so the person who is under stress may get easily irritated so sometimes his colleagues or other persons boss they also think what happens to this person earlier he was not like that now why he is behaving like this so but due to stress our communication get affected irrational personal or group decision so those who are under stress due to high stress they were, they are, their problem solving abilities is not very good affected so and they are due to high stress they are not able to take rational decisions so sometimes they take certain irrational decision about themselves or about the organization about the work so some of the person due to stress they resign from the job it also hampered interactions and relationship at workplace we all know that the person who is under stress it's very difficult to interact with the with the person because the person is always preoccupied with his thoughts or stress or anxiety or depression there is a new concept called a technocratic stress okay it is a new type of stress which is experienced due to the lack of an ability to cope with changes or advancement in technology seen in case of generally middle or older adults now every day the technology is growing like anything so it sometimes it's very difficult to cope with those changes for example earlier there were physical meetings now there is a zoom meeting or online meetings so you have to share your screen you have to prepare something so it's like sometimes it's very difficult for the older persons uh, or middle aged person to cope up with such changes so you might have seen during this uh, corona time many of the uh, elder adults they were having a uh, difficulty in sharing the screen or uh, doing lots of like, with the difficulty they were doing and now many of them have coped up with this changes but still this is a problem and we do not know in coming future what are the other changes this technology is bringing so this may increase the stress and often found to be associated with lower level of productivity so there is always a will to learn and we all try to learn but due to stress our learning process get hampered and due to certain changes in the technology also we get highly stressed there is another concept called burnout so what is burnout when you try to do something but you are not getting the appropriate results or the expected results then there will be burnout so what happens in burnout a totally exhaustion irritation in effectiveness discounting of self and others and problems related to health so generally burnout seen in clinical setup more uh, for example when doctors are treating the patients and patient is not improving and uh, or it is if they are engaged in chronic treating chronic disorders so after some times the treating team may feel burnout so we have to work on the burnout also in corporate sector also this concept is there because the boss is there to improve the functioning but the staffs are not able to improve so there will be burnout the person will become hopeless after some time so it is called burnout stress syndrome boss this can result in a decrease of energy level decreased illness resistance experiencing heightened dissatisfaction and pessimism as well as besides as well besides lack of efficiency in carrying out one's work so 
due to stress there is a lots of problem if person may develop burnout and due to burnout there will be a burnout stress syndrome and the person landed in a very bad condition <clears throat> let us see the effect of stress on relationships how stress affect our relationship so we all know that human are dependent we dependent we are dependent on each other and we cannot function in isolation like we if you see in a class many students they discuss with each other if some concept is not clear they ask their friend so this is the tendency like in family we were in a close coordination with each other in organization whatever how big the organization it won't matter but the all the staffs they work in a close coordination with each other so they rely on each other so what happened if the stress is high what happens to this dependence this uh, working in a cohesion working in a group working in close coordination taking uh, order and giving order so what happens to those things let us see so what happens due to high stress all these things get affected so the person starts functioning in isolation the person may not rely on other the person may not share his work or pending work with others the person may not discuss that he is not able to do his daily works so all these things leads to a uh, affected relationship so the, the relationship may get affected so stress can also have an impact on the individual's relationship due to anger social withdrawal distraction and less affection towards other so see if we are not very very much uh, concerned about others showing affection to others so others will also get less in, less interested least interested in us if we are distracted if we are not focused on others so others will also uh, may not be very much engaged in us if we are socially withdrawn then others may approach us but if we are socially withdrawn they give up after some time he is not interested and due to anger and irritation people do not like to discuss so you also know that with those who get angry those who get irritated you will generally avoid the person or you generally do not talk about the any issue with the person Due, due to substance use, the relationship get very much affected. You all know that all domestic violence, crime, etc., are related to substance use. So, due to substance use, the relationship due to stress, the person takes substance, and due to substance use, the relationship get affected. And lots of interpersonal conflicts may arise due to high stress. So if everything is fine, then the, even the mistakes of the ch children, mistakes of the partner will be over. But if the person is under stress, even the minute things, minute disorder, minute dysfunction will be causing lots of problem for the person and lots of intense reaction from that person. So it may lead to increased sensitivity to others' communication. The person has, if the, like the friend has told something in a simple way, but the person who is under stress may interpret it differently. The person may interpret it as a sarcasm. So usage of abusive, harsh and unpleasant language will also be there and this may affect relationship very badly. No one will listen to your abusive or harsh or unpleasant language again and again. So stress can be termed as contagious, where when a partner is undergoing stress, the other partner will also experience stress. So you can remember that. If, suppose, the father is under stress, so this stress may, um, may be transmitted to 
mother also and uh, if father and mother or any one of them are under stress so it may affect their children also so it means if one person is under stress the other persons who are related to that person may also get the stress same thing happens in organization also in offices also if one person is under stress he may disturb other persons not knowingly but his behavior will be very disturbing for the others so to summarize the effect of stress we have seen it affects our health badly it affects our job performance and it affects our relationship directly or indirectly okay now let us see the another unit that is unit 5 here we are going to discuss about how to cope with the stress because the stress is not going to go away very easily and every day we have to face one or another type of stress so stress is going to be there so we should know how to cope with the stress so so here in this unit we are going to discuss about the definition to define stress and coping also and the nature of coping and uh, we will see the goals of coping we will discuss about the coping style in details like provocative coping avoidant coping emotion focused coping and problem focused coping so some of the copings are very healthy some of the copings are not so healthy so people try to deal with the stress with some pretty defined ways these are called coping strategies sometimes these strategies are maladaptive in nature these strategies could be effective or ineffective for example <clears throat> if a person is not getting sleep or his sleep is disturbed for 2 3 days and he discuss this thing in his office about his from his with his friends that he is not getting sleep proper sleep so his friends may advise why don't you take one peg of um, wine it is good for heart also and it is good for sleep also and the person finds it very exciting yes he is getting very good sleep so it seems this taking alcohol in the night for getting sleep is a coping a good coping but in the long term taking alcohol in the night may lead to addiction and it may cause lots of problem even though the person may not be get addicted it affects his physical health liver and certain other things so let us see the definition of the coping how it is defined so basically coping is the way in which an individual tries to deal with the stress experienced by him so basically it is a way of dealing the stress efforts both cognitive and behavioral that are directed towards overcoming decreasing or enduring the internal and external demands is basically coping so it could be instrumental coping it is denoted by results of cognitive appraisal or conflicts related to emotion whereas palliative coping is denoted by regulation of emotions as a result of cognitive repressal of the stressful event or situation so why we need coping okay why it is required for us so the coping may aim at dealing with the problem that is the cause of any distress in the individual or to deal with the negative emotions experienced by him therefore coping is mainly attributed to the reduction or alleviation of the distress experienced by the individual so that's why like we have to escape from the pain we have to escape from the distress we have to reduce the pain we have to reduce the problem so that's why we need coping so let us see the adaptive and maladaptive coping 
So an adaptive coping reduces the stress and has long-term positive effect. So if your coping gives you long-term positive effects, it means the coping is adaptive. The coping is healthy, healthy coping. But if it won't give you any long-term positive effect, short-term positive effect may be there, but if it won't give you long-term positive effect and in long term, it may give you negative effect. So such type of copings are called unhealthy or maladaptive coping. So maladaptive coping may provide a respite from a stress for a short period of time, but in long term, it will affect you badly. For example, I have uh, given you the example of alcohol. If you take wine for getting sleep, so initial effect will be good, but long term, it will be very bad. So variations in ways of coping are based on personality, tolerance level for stimulation, psychological hardiness, style of attribution, and learned helplessness. We'll see all these things in a little bit detail in our other slides. So what is psychological hardiness? There are three main components of psychological hardiness, commitment, control, and accepting the challenge. So psychological hardiness is basically an individual's ability to deal with the stressful situation with the resilience. So you know that resilience is bouncing back. Suppose something has destroyed, everything has destroyed, nothing has left, but still you have the inner feeling that yes, you have to live, you have to survive, you have to overcome all those hurdles, burdens, barriers. So this is basically resilience. So hardiness can be related with the three main aspects, commitment, as I told you, control and challenge. This can determine the response to a stress or coping strategy employed by the individual. So optimistic individuals are likely to cope better with stressful situations. So if the person is committed, if the person thinks he can control the things, control himself, and if the person is ready to take challenges, so the person is able to manage coping in a bit, able to manage the stress in a better way than the person who are not optimistic or not having these. Another <clears throat> actor is learned helplessness. We all know that this concept was introduced by Seligman. You know, this, the term is used to describe the interference with adaptive responding produced by inescapable shock and also as a process which we believe underlies the behavior. So basically what is learned uh, helplessness? It's like the person, we can see it in a, with the example of a corporate sector. Like the person does lots of work, good work, but boss never gives him any uh, feedback or reinforcement, never praises. So, and when the ball, uh, when the person is not doing anything, then also he's not getting any negative feedback. So after some time, the person may become indifferent and may not be doing anything. So this is called learning. Let us see the gender differences in coping. So men and women generally they differ in understanding or feeling the stress. So women are more likely to comply coping. Women are more likely to employ coping strategies like positive self-talk, seeking support from others, continuously worrying about the stressful events. Whereas men generally do not do like this. They do not talk a lot about their stress. So talking is also a way of coping. Women are also more prone to develop learned helplessness. And women use coping strategies that exchange in their emotional reaction to a situation that is stressful. It means the way men and women differ to understand the stress, the same way men and women differ in using coping. So women use different copings, men use different copings. 
we may use more or less emotion focused mopping whereas men use so women <coughs> perceive more psychological distress and display depression and anxiety due to stress this can also be attributed to coping strategies that are emotion focused men on the other hand could engage in male adaptive coping strategies like consumption of alcohol or drugs or smoking however men are more likely to focus on the problem so the focus of the men and women is different men generally focus on the problem uh, but women generally they focus on the emotion but there is a greater chance that men may use male adaptive coping like using substances now let us see the goals of coping <clears throat> the main goal of coping is dealing with the stressor so that its impact should be minimal individual differences exist in the coping style adopted by the persons different coping strategies may may be effective in different situation and during the coping process either internal resources or external resources are utilized so whenever there is a stress we have to reduce it by using any coping okay so that's why coping is very important but every person may have different types of coping styles and different coping strategies may be effective in different situations like one coping strategy may not be effective in another uh, in all the situation and during the coping process either internal resources or external resources are utilized suppose you you are in a crisis of and you need money so what you will do you can't use your internal resources you have to ask from your friends relatives you have to go to bank ask for loan that so to enhance the possibility of recovery by decreasing the negative environmental conditions the coping is used to be able to adjust to the negative situation we need to use coping to maintain a positive self image and maintain emotional balance coping must be used to ensure positive interpersonal relationship coping is used so coping is effective when it leads to recovery and when the individual is able to adapt to the stressful situation by means of maintaining a positive image about oneself emotional balance and the health defective interpersonal relationships physiological biochemical changes and psychological functioning can be assessed in order to ascertain whether the coping has been adaptive or not so if your coping affects your physiological biochemical and psychological functioning negatively it means coping is not adaptive it is maladaptive or unhealthy if there is a reduction in levels of stress then the coping strategy is adaptive in nature also the time taken by an individual to reach the same state of functioning before they experience a negative event or display of an improved state of functioning then before the negative event was experienced. let us see the coping styles we all have different coping styles so these are the four main coping styles proactive coping avoidant coping emotion focused coping and problem focused coping so proactive coping and avoidant coping are based on the method of coping how we cope where is emotion focused coping and problem focused coping are based on the focus of coping where the person is focusing on so the person will focus on the on his or her emotion or the person will focus on the uh, problem where is proactive is basically how the person is seeing the stress and 
or try to copy it the same way I wanted how the person tries to copy the stress. Let us see all these four copying style in a little bit detail. The individual will directly confront the stressful situation or event. So this is an example of proactive form. Individual takes direct action by developing direct action by developing a better idea about the stress creating situation. So when there is a problem, stress, the person directly tries to deal with the stress. So there are five stages of proactive coping. Let us understand in a detail. Accumulation of resources, the first stage. Stage two is identifying and anticipating the potential stressor. Even the stressor is not there, but the person is prepared himself before the stress comes. Stress three, initial appraisal. Appraisal means giving personal meaning to the incident. Stage four, preliminary efforts to cope. Stage five, seeking feedback and using it. So these are the five stages. Let us see in a little bit different in detail. Proactive coping. So what happens in stage one? Accumulation of the resources. Whatever resources the person is having inner or outer, the person accumulate all the resources. For example, the um, child has uh, appearing for the board exam. So the parents prepare for money, uh, collect the money or <coughs> some save the money for his admission in some good college so hostel expenditure and other things can be made out with those money <clears throat> so they prepare in advance the individual makes attempt to accumulate resources to deal with the stressor this could also be in terms of gathering information so as to understand the stressful situation in better manner Stage two, identifying or anticipating the potential stressor. A potential stressor is anticipated or ant identified by the individual. For example, if it is expected that teacher may ask for a certain report or homework, the student anticipates the stressor and starts working on the report beforehand. Proactive coping stage three is initial appraisal. Appraisal refers to the individual's continuous evaluation of how things are going in relation to his personal goals, value, and beliefs. So, <clears throat> initial appraisal of the stress-creating situation is carried out, and this helps in adopting a better strategy to deal with the stressor. So, it means the person gives meaning and try to assess the situation. Then stage four is basic uh, preliminary efforts to cope with the stressful situation. Based on the initial appraisal, preliminary efforts to cope with the stressful situation are carried out. If efforts do not show any positive results, then some other actions is taken in order to deal with the situations. Stage 5, seeking feedback and using the same. Feedback is sought and used so that modifications and changes can be carried out. It is based on stage 3 and 4. So basically, proactive coping is the best way. Like you sense the stress, you sense the crisis, crisis beforehand. You, you collect your all the resources, inner or outer, which is required to deal with the stress so you can cope up with the stress then you can basically prepare yourself you can appraise the situation how the situation can be dealt with and you try to cope up with the situation and you get feedback also from your best wishes so another the so the we have discussed about the proactive coping now avoid and coping is that this is not the very good type of coping, but in some situation it, it is helpful or initially when the person is not equipped with all sorts of uh, healthy coping, so avoided coping can be 
have it. But generally, we should avoid it. Avoid it. The individual will try to avoid the stress creating situation or may give less importance to the stressful situation. The behavior is directed towards <clears throat> avoiding certain thoughts or feelings that could arise due to stressful situation. Avoidance coping impacts self confidence. So, if you avoid it because suppose the task was given in the class or homework was given and you have not prepared. So in next class, what you will do? You not try to make eye contact with your teacher. You try to sit back on the back bend. Okay. So it definitely affects your confidence. And suppose teacher asks you, you, you couldn't answer. You have not answered. And others answer. So it definitely affects your self-confidence. You think that you are not very good. It involves cognitive and behavioral efforts, denying, minimizing, or avoiding, dealing directly with st stressful demands, and it's closely linked to distress and depression. So those who use avoidant coping style in future, they develop high distress, depression, anxiety. Why? Because it affects their self-esteem, self confidence and it leads to because the person has to avoid every time and if initially like initial avoidance if it is reinforced like the person escaped from the stress so it is the person will definitely use avoidant coping as time so in simple terms certain behaviors that may steal up negative memories are avoided so individuals who use avoidant coping may not continue pursuing their goal if they experience thoughts that create anxiety. So same thing happens if the student is not avoiding classes, avoiding homework, avoiding reading books. So it will be very difficult for the student to pursue his study or her study. So we should try to avoid using avoidance coping so let us see the emotion focused coping mainly focuses on managing one's emotion so there is a problem but your focus is less on the problem more on managing the emotion if you are feeling bad so you are managing yourself so you should not feel bad its purpose is to manage emotions that are related with the stressful situation rather than modifying the situation. It involves management of the emotional reactions toward the event causing stress. Emotion-focused coping strategies aim to reduce and manage the intensity of the negative and distressing emotions that a stressful situation has caused rather than solving the problematic situation itself. Coping is directed towards decreasing any unpleasantness that the person experiences as a result of facing the stressful situation. For example, the teacher has asked one question which he taught in the last class and the student has not answered. So teacher scolded. Or her. So what happened? The student is feeling very, very bad. So the focus is, the student's focus is on how to cope up with this bad mood. So this is called emotion focus. Whereas in problem focus, the student's focus will go, okay, next time onwards, I try to read and after reading only, I'll come to class. So I'll complete the chapter, then I'll come to class. I read everything. I try to answer as many questions as I can. So that is problem. But it doesn't mean emotion focused coping is useless. It has also some importance. This coping style also involves positive reappraisal, where positive aspects of the situation are focused on keeping in mind one's own benefits and growth. So emotion focused coping are often used when change in the stressful situation is not possible. For example, death in the family 
or something bad happens or break up divorce in such condition and emotion focused coping more to be used by women than men so using emotion focused coping can help in decreasing the negative effects of the stressor it helps the individual to accept the situation and will lead to decrease in experience of chronic stress it also helps individuals to think with a clear mind and seek a solution to the problem it may lead to contentment in life and bring about positivity it enhances one's ability to focus on aspects that can be modified or changed some of the strategies of emotion focused coping include listening to music maintaining a diary meditation chanting certain mantra religious mantra exercise etc what is the drawback of emotion focused coping it may not be as effective as the source of the stress is not dealt with it and as such no long term solution is sought so this is one of the drawback that the person is totally engrossed in emotion totally focused on the emotion whereas the problem is ignored so that will be one of the drawback but sometimes it will now let us see the problem focused coping this is also one of the best coping proactive coping and problem focused coping are the best coping. it involves identifying the source of the problem so as to either deal with it or modify it it involves taking control of the stressful situation seeking information about the stress the situation and evaluation of positive and negative aspect in a situation the proactive coping is closely related with the problem focused coping in initial stages of this coping identification of the problem so that the source of the stress is clear this is important as this coping style can be effective only when there is a clarity with regard to the problem so if the problem is clear then only you can use problem focused coping it works well where one knows what the source of the stress is <clears throat> it is also effective in dealing with the stressors and useful in long term source of stress is based on emotions then it is better to use emotion focused coping rather than problem focused coping for instance while dealing with loss of a loved one divorce and breakup as you may i told you earlier that in certain conditions emotion focused coping is more helpful and these conditions are like where there is a breakup that break or divorce or some argument with the friend so various strategies involved in problem solving coping include management of time seeking support seeking help from others and planning so if the person is not very um, comfortable in using these things then the problem solving problem focused coping cannot be used do so what are the drawbacks the focus should be on the problem only there might be certain issues which are ignored for example if a person had an interview but could not prepare for it due to paucity of time he has no other choice but face the interview and do his best in this case the paucity of time could be termed as roadblock uh, that need to be focused on as time has already passed and nothing can be done about it it may not be effective in every stressful situations so other the view points of the coping is a present focused coping 
of combative coping, preventive coping. <clears throat> Let us see. Uh, so, what is appraisal focused coping? Uh, it's given by Carver and by Connor Smith. Uh, the assumption of an individual with regard to his perception of the stress are challenged by the means of cognitive reappraisal. Reappraisal means you are seeing a thing, you are seeing a stressor, you are seeing an event, an event in a certain way. So you again try to see in all those things in a different way. So we appraise the situation. In combative coping, in order to deal with the stressor, the individual makes an attempt to remove the stressor by overcoming it. Okay, so it is called combative. It involves monitoring of stress resource accumulation, dealing with the stressor by attacking it directly, tolerance of stress and decreasing arousal. So what happens when there is a stress, we become highly aroused. So this is also one way that you decrease your arousal, you try to tolerate the stress or attack it directly. So this is called combative. Whereas in preventive coping, it includes adjustment <coughs> uh, so that the stressor can be avoided. So you do lots of adjustment here and there so the stressor can be avoided. Uh, cognitive restructuring takes place so that the stressor is not threatening anymore. So you modify your thought process you restructure your thought so you may not perceive the uh, event as, an, as a stressor. One's own potential for resistance is also strengthened so that the stressor can be prevented from occurring. So what happens in case of a homemaker? So like lots of stressor is there, lots of household chores and other things she has to do. So what she and she it is causing a stress for her. So what she will see is not getting any rest. So what she will do, she will think that no, this is my duty. I should do more for my family. So this is cognitive restraints. So demand levels are adjusted. Behavior patterns that lead to stress are modified and coping resources, physiological, psychological, financial, etc., are developed. <clears throat> so let us summarize this chapter also. So in this chapter, we had a discussion about the goals of coping. It is very much required because when there is a stress, it affects our health, our psychological health, physical health, our productivity, our relationship with others, it affects lots of things. So we, so we have to cope, we have to develop certain healthy coping mechanism. We have discussed about the positive and negative coping. So basically, if coping is adaptive, if coping is effective, if coping is healthy, then the effect will be positive, but when the coping is unhealthy, maladaptive, it may not be effective, effective and there will not be relief from the stressor in long term. In short term, there might be some relief, but in long term, there won't be any relief. Then we have discussed about the coping styles. So in coping styles, we have discussed about proactive coping. So we anticipate the stressor and try to manage it beforehand. So we prepare each and everything beforehand before the uh, stress will come. Like uh, <coughs> a student preparing for exams. Then avoidant coping, it is not very good, not very healthy. 
emotion focused is basically focusing on the emotion rather than solving the problem but there are certain situation where emotion focused coping is very important the problem focused coping is the best coping mechanism where the person tries to solve the problem thank you